Okay, so today we're going to do a video on installing GitLab server. And we're going to use Ubuntu 18.04 as the server OS. And basically this configuration is going to be a simple installation. We're not going to do any super advanced config. Um, I've got a diagram here for the purpose of um, explaining why I'm installing GitLab. So I'm not a developer. I'm an infrastructure guy. And we're going to use GitLab to maintain the code repositories, manifests, and higher data and stuff like that that we keep in Puppet Enterprise for the intent of pushing that configuration down to our Puppet agents. And so literally that's the point of this installation. Um, if you've got a development team, you probably, got, you probably already have Git running. I'm sure anybody in the development world uses Git. At least I hope they do. Maybe some people don't. Um, so let's get started. Basically, this is a pretty easy installation. I use the install steps found at gitlab.com. And um, let's go ahead and get connected to Git server. So I've got a VM running in VMware workstation here, and I gave it four gigs of RAM and uh, two CPUs with two cores each CPU. And what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to switch user to root. And what I want to do first is let's do an apt update. Make sure that our operating system is fully upgraded and an apt upgrade to see if there's anything available. Yeah, it says I got 11 to be upgraded, so we'll go ahead and get these real quick and install them. Shouldn't take very long. 11's not very many. So um, first installation step that we're supposed to do is um, install open SSH server and CA certificates, which in this instance of Ubuntu, that's already been installed, but I'll demonstrate that still by just copying this and pasting it. And you'll see that um, n nothing has to be done, which means that it's already installed on the server. Okay, that's taking a long time. 98%. Don't you guys love status bars that literally have, like, all, in this case, no purpose, right? Hey, let's race all the way up to 98% and then sit there for a friggin' long time and wonder what that other 2% is. I mean, this is obviously not time-related. This is more like steps, and one of the steps got paused, which is taking, why it's taking forever on the 98%. Okay, so, oops. Oops. Oh, man. Messing up my documentation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to install these, and it's going to go, oh, look, you've already got them. Don't worry about it. Okay, perfect. I wasn't going to worry about it. Um, we're going to install Postfix. Postfix is um, a mail server that is recommended by Git because uh, Git uses mail for, um, your, for your, like, user accounts and generating and resetting passwords and stuff like that. So literally... I haven't figured out a way to get around this. I'm not really sure there's any point to try to figure it around, especially in a lab envir environment, getting around using Postfix. So we're just going to go ahead and use it. We're going to choose local only because um, in this lab, I don't need anything other than local only. I would say that in a corporate environment, you probably want to do something like internet with a smart host, and then you can use a relay server to relay the email out to Office 365 or whatever you use. But we're just going to go with um, local only. And mail... System mail name, yeah, that's fine. doesn't matter. And because we're going to use Postfix to receive the email from the Git system, because it's going to go ahead and try to send email, Git, when we create an account, it's going to issue it a password, and it's going to try to send email to that, that uh, email address associated with that user. And um, because of that, we need a way to be able to check that mail, right? And we just did Postfix um, local system only, which means I need to be able to type mail. And mail is only ins available if you install mail utils. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. It's not a very big install. It's a, it's a text um, implementation of a mail client. I went ahead and put it in the documentation there. By the way, all this documentation here, which is this one's pretty short, I'm going to put in the description so you'll be able to copy paste these as well. Um, now let's get around to installing Git. So basically, we're going to go ahead and download this install shell script. And it's going to run it, sudo bash, right? It's going to pipe it to bash. So that's basically what it's doing. It's installing Git, like literally right now. Maybe I'm wrong. It's installing the repository. I got my steps mixed up. It says right there, repository. See, if I could read, I would understand that. Okay, so now this is literally going to install Git server. I don't recall how long this takes to do, by the way. Um, external URL, you might want to match that to something that's like your environment. So in my environment, I'm using stopitsmore.com as the domain name. And we're going to go ahead and just install it with that. And I'm not sure. I don't remember how long this takes because I've only done it once or twice in my lab. So, oh, look at that, four minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And when it's done uh, getting and installing, I'll bring it back.
Okay, so that installation actually took a decent amount of time, to be honest with you, on my environment. Um, again, I'm running on a spindle disk. Actually, I don't know if that's again. Maybe I said that in the last video. But I'm running on spindle, not SSD, so the installation was, was um, kind of time-consuming. I mean, it's not like you have to do anything. You just kind of let it go through this stuff, and, and it does its own magic. Okay, so now basically, though, you should have the GitLab console readily available. And we're going to go ahead and switch over to Windows, uh, Windows 10 instance I have running. And we're going to go and download the Git SCM, which is the client. And so <coughs> to access Git, like the, to clone repositories and things like that. And so on this Windows box, I'm going to go ahead and first um, go to the, the Git instance. And that's this IP address. And the first thing it's going to ask you is to set the root password. So I'm going to do something basic for my own sanity here. Okay, so now we're going to log in with the root password that we just set, which was a pretty simple password. And um, now we've literally just logged into GitLab. We don't have any groups, any projects, any other users, just the root password. So before we get started, though, I want to um, switch over to Git um, for Windows.org, and we're going to download the Git SCM client. And that's this guy here. already downloaded it. And we're going to go ahead and install this. Um, we're running this in a Windows environment, so some of this configuration is going to be slightly different. I, a lot of DevOps stuff is Linux-related, so I'm going to answer some of these questions to um, check the leads, ask, answer some of these questions with the assumption that our backend is Linux. Because um, again, we're installing this Git instance for the purpose of managing the repos uh, the configuration data inside Puppet Enterprise. Okay, so um, I don't have Atom installed, so I can't I can't click next. We'll just go ahead and say Vim is going to be my default. That's fine. And um, command line, get from the command line, also third party. This is recommended. I'm just going to go with that. Um, so there's, you have two choices here. You can do open SSL library, or you can do native um, Windows secure channel library. So the benefit here is that in a corporate environment, a lot of times you'll have a root CA that is like a Microsoft CA, part of the Active Directory. And um, in a lab, you don't have that. So it doesn't really matter in your lab, I don't think. I'm going to go ahead and just say use the open SSL library. Um, check out Windows style commit Unix style line endings. That's fine because Windows um, carriage return and line feeds values are different than Linux. Windows and Linux are different there. So we're just going to make it read as Windows and commit as Linux. And then mini TTY is fine. Uh, go ahead and leave those blank and install. Um, so this shouldn't take uh, very long to install, even on my slow box. Not a whole lot there. What we're going to get, though, is we're going to get two applications. We're going to get a Git GUI and a Git Bash. And I like the Bash more because that's that's what you're going to get used to using is the Git commands from the command line versus the GUI. The GUI. Um, you can do, actually, I don't even know how much you can do in the GUI, to be honest with you. So um, what we're going to use the GUI for is generating an SSH uh, private key, though. That's the only thing I'm going to use it to do in this example. So now that we've got Git SCM installed, um, what I want to do is let's go ahead and run that really quick. So let's scroll down and find Git. We're going to do the Git GUI. We'll load this GUI up, and I want to do help show SSH key. So I don't have one yet. We're going to generate one. It's going to generate some random key. I'm going to type in a passphrase here. Um, I would suggest doing a complex passphrase. The stronger the passphrase, the better the key will be. Now in my case, it was very simple. <laughs> And that's it. So I copied. Uh, so what I didn't show you was I literally copied this clipboard, and I'm going to use that now when I create a user over here. So now if we go over to uh, admin area, and I want to go to new user, and I'm going to create an account called DM706. Username is going to be DM706, and the email address is going to be DM706 at localhost. Now, remember when we installed Postfix in the beginning of this video? This is literally the email address that's going to be used for that Postfix instance to capture and link um, the email that it receives to the DM706 user on that server. So if it's a different user, that's fine. Just create a new user for that, and then you should be able to check email at localhost um, for the password that comes through. I'm going to make this guy an admin just for kicks, and the rest of this I don't care. So now I've got a DM706, and the reason I wanted to do that is because under SSH keys, I need to add one, but we can't do that until we sign in as this user. So let's go ahead and sign out. I'm going to sign in as DM706. Uh, I didn't set a password, did I? H here I am trying to sign in, and I, I just explained why I can't do that. Okay, so back on the server here. This is the server we installed the Git on, and this is the server that would receive the email. And you can see right there, literally now I'm, I just exited out of root, so I exited that su or sudo-s, which is a switch user to root. And um, I exited out of that 
and now I'm back to my standard user and it literally told me I've got mail, which is great because this is the mail I want to read. So if I type in mail, you can see that I've got one entry here and this is the GitLab email account was created for you and this is where the password is going to be. So I'm going to type in one and push enter. It's going to open that up. And what I want to find in this email is your account's been created successfully. Log in, click here to set your password. This is the token I want. So I blocked that. Let's go back over here. Um, we're going to actually want to just paste that in right like that. Uh, duh, I have to change this because I don't have host name entries yet. So the IP address, I don't know why it doesn't just let me change that. What the heck? 186. Uh, I think it was unencrypted. Perfect. So now it's going to let me set a password. So I'm going to set a pretty basic password, what I've been using everywhere else in this lab. And now I've got it. So now I can sign in as DM706. And what I want to do next, no, I don't want to save my password, is I want to go to settings under my user. And I want to go SSH keys. And I want to paste that key I got from the GUI. So I got to come back in here and say show again, copy the clipboard, paste it here. And you can see that literally it just gave me this key. And the reason for this key is because when I do the, the git clone and the git uh, push and the git pulls and all that stuff, it's going to be based off of a, a, an SSH, SSH, SSH key. And that, that should allow me to do these things without typing my password in every time. So um, I just added that key to my profile. And um, I can go ahead and close this git GUI. And what we want to do next is open up git bash. And this is the command line interface for git. And we're going to go ahead and say, we're in, we're in our user folder. So if I did an LS or a DIR, you can see either one works. You can see that I'm in my user folder. So this is literally C users, DM706 is the user. I think you probably say that right there. Yeah. So this is the Linux implementation of a C dollar, right? Linux doesn't have, and we're running bash here, I think, some, some sh Linux shell equivalent. And you can see that obviously it can't do a C colon, right? That doesn't exist in this, in Linux bash. So. What we want to do, though, is now that we have the key in there, um, what I should be able to do is, one, let's verify that the key's here. If I do to the, the SSH folder, you can see these in here, LL. You can see this is the key that I just issued through the GUI, and that's the public key for it. We gave the private, the private key we don't do anything with. You never take your private key off of your computer. The public key we gave and posted into here. This is the public key. Okay. Oops. That's not what I want. Back to here. OK. Uh, so basically, back to the bash. And the first thing I want to do is, because this is a, a uh, implementation between Git and Puppet, and that's the perfect reason we installed this Git, we're going to do one more step before we finish this video, and that is to make a dir called Git repos. You call it whatever you want. I'm going to go to Git repos, and I have a f it should be empty, right, because I just created it. And what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and configure my Git client with some commands. The first one is to set my username, and the next one is to set oops, is to set my email address for that user, which is the DM706 at localhost. In a, in a real environment, you'd probably put your real email there. Don't use this this uh, lab environment type stuff. And then the next thing you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone a shell repository for a Puppet configuration environment, and that's from straight from GitHub. We're going to go ahead and clone this bad boy. So now if I see it, you should see a control repo. Perfect. And there's a bunch of files in here, right? Because this is an empty shell of a control repo for our Puppet imp implementation. So what we want to do is go into that control repo. I want to say git remote remove the origin because I don't want to use that repo anymore. I can't push or pull from, I can't push to that repo rather. I can pull because I just did that. But I can't push to it because it's not my repo. So I'm going to remove the origin. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the origin to a repo that I haven't uh, actually, we can't paste do that yet because we need to create this repo in our in our Git implementation. So we're going to switch back over to Git. I'm going to create a new group. Let's go to the home page. Let's create a group. We're going to call this group like the company name or something. In this case, stop us more. I'm going to make it an internal one, and we're going to create that group. And then inside this group, I want to create a project. I'm going to create this project, and we're going to call this project Control-Repo. So literally, that's my access right there. It's an internal group internal visibility rather, and now I've got a repo that I can literally clone to and from, which is excellent. So what I'm going to do is, you can see here it says git, it's dot stop us more dot com. Well, I don't have DNS entry, i got to use the IP address, so I can literally do this now. I have a repository that I can push all this code to. And so you can see this, this repository for this project is empty, right? We're going to go back to this git bash, 
and we're going to paste in this command that says git remote add origin. I'm, I'm basically adding the git repository that I just created on my own instance of git to push this, this recently cloned git repository that I got from GitHub. So I'm gonna, I basically I downloaded from GitHub the, the empty shell, and now I'm going to change the origin, basically seeing the Git dos destination, the Git server destination, to my own. And then I'm going to push that code back up, and it's going to show up in my own repository. So let's go ahead and add that there. Um, you could just do a, a uh, push, like a git push dash u origin, but the problem is if I've got SSH running, it's going to tell me there is a uh, potentially a key issue, right? Enter passphrase. Let's see if it works. It may or may not, because if it's using... Any kind of secure channel might have ran into some issues. No, perfect. So in a, in a case where you have, um, actually, I know why that I put that there. So basically before, I cloned it from an HTTPS page, right? If I were to push it back to an HTTPS, which you can do, if you come in here and you look at your re repository, you can see um, there should be two ways to push. Here, let me refresh this page really quick. Oh, by the way, it's going to have all the content now. In this clone page, there we go. Cloning with HTTP versus cloning with HTTPS. So if this was set to clone with HTTPS and the certificate was not trusted by your client, you would literally have to proceed this with git SSL no verify true and then do your git push. In this case, we don't have to do that. So I'm actually going to delete this because we're not using HTTPS, we're using SSH and we already did a key generation for that. So coming back to here, what I wanted to show you was that after we did this, we did a, a push of all this content that we cloned from GitHub and now I pushed it, I pulled it from GitHub and I pushed it into my Git. And now you can see that literally that data is all there inside my Git instance. Um, so basically what you would want to do is you'd probably want to create some branches in addition to your production branch. I would create like a development and a QA or a testing branch and um, go from there. So, but that's going to be the point at the, the end of this video. Rather, that was the point was to install Git and um, configure um, Git to be able to hold a repository for your Puppet configuration. And we haven't got as far as con as linking Git to Puppet. That's going to be a different video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful and beneficial in your journey for using Git and Puppet in the enterprise environment. Thanks for watching.